independent events and giving birth. So today we're going to discuss a little bit of probability, uh, and we're going to discuss independent events, uh, and we're going to talk about giving birth. Uh, more likely than not, uh, most of the people watching this video um, at some point were born, so you do have uh, perhaps a connection to this. Uh, but today we're going to look at uh, if a woman gives birth to three children, what is the probability that all three will be boys? Uh, so contrary to whatever wives tell, you may have heard, uh, each child would be an independent event, meaning the second child doesn't look at the first and say, oh, since you were a boy, I'm going to be a boy too. Or the second child doesn't look at the first and say, oh, since you were a boy, I'm going to rebel and be a girl now to change things up a bit. Um, the amount of milk you drink or whether you have the pencil on your belly, none of that really makes a difference. Uh, each child is an independent event. So the sex of each child is an independent event. Uh, so what is the probability of the first child being a boy? There's two possible outcomes we're going to say male or female, uh, and of that, one success. So you have a one in two chance of having a boy. Uh, and these would be independent events, so we can do one half times one half times one half to determine uh, the probability of all three children being boys. And then another way we could write this take up a little bit less space, would be one half cubed, since we're doing one half times one half times one half. And then another way you can write this that you might see, since we know one cubed would simply be one, we wouldn't need to put this. You might also see this as one over two cubed. And then, of course, for this situation, 2 cubed is 8. So the probability of having three boys would be 1 out of 8. Uh, 